All right, good morning, everyone. Stocks hitting fresh record highs on this Wednesday, and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Kramer to break it all down. And Jim, let's begin with IBM's earnings. Yeah, look, IBM basically said, listen, it's going to be the fourth quarter now that you're going to see some sort of good news uh, when the mainframe is really in full swing. Therefore, what dominated the discussion was 21 straight quarters of revenue decline. Uh, the strategic imperatives are doing fine, but you need better than fine. Uh, in the end, I think a lot of people are just saying, wait till next year and a wait till next year environment obviously there's so many other stocks worth buying all right moving to the banks how about morgan stanley morgan stanley shows you the power of the model of wealth management when executed well by james gorman they're doing in wealth management uh when they, when they bought that when they decided to emphasize that division they were making in a year what they're now making in a quarter this was a superbly superbly executed quarter and i think that james gorman is going to be what may end up being the star of this banking season. I, I have felt it might be PNC, it might be Mike Corbett at City. Uh, but in general, I like the bank earnings, and I'm going to recommend that people find a bank to buy. They're good. PNC's good. Morgan Stanley's good. Uh, City, which is owned by Action Alerts, is very, very good. We own Key, too. Uh, Key will be reporting, but this is a, a strong, undervalued group. I could make the case that Morgan Stanley should go from uh, 12 multiple to a 14 or 15 multiple because of its sheer consistency and able to be able to triumph in this environment. And we're going to talk again about Key later, but what did you make of KBW's downgrade of Goldman? Yeah, I think that Goldman was too hard on itself in its conference call. I do think if there's any volatility, it's ready going to snap back. Let's remember they did beat expectations, and the equity business was really good. If you believe there's going to be no volatility, then you're going to be right with Keith. Uh, if you think that there will be some volatility, then you're going to get a great, turns out to be a great buy. All right, shifting to Chipotle and the reports of norovirus at one of its restaurants. Yeah, you know, uh, this is uh, one of the situations where enough time had been put between the initial instances and uh, back in 2015. And now that Chipotle, I think, could have really uh, been a very up stock. And now it's going to be another uh, 18 months. Hmm. And that's just sometimes it happens. What, this is a very unfortunate incident. It could happen to any restaurant chain, as any of the restaurateurs would tell you. Uh, but Chipotle is now off the radar screen for another 18 months. All right, and what, is, what did you think of United Airlines earnings from Week Outlook? United, I mean, look, I think all airlines people think are created equal. If you have domestic, which is why we like Southwest for action alerts, then you're not going to have a lot of price competition. If you're up against, in Asia, you're up against some low-cost low carriers, and if you're up in Europe, you're up against some low-cost carriers. And a high-cost carrier like United can't really compete as well. So I think the stock, which by the way is up 10 points since that nasty incident mm. of, a pass, of a passenger being dragged out, was due for a bit of a pullback. But we're going to tell people in action alerts, please stay put to Southwest and maybe we get a chance to buy some more. All right, there are reports. We did sell some in the 60s. So. Yes. Yeah. There are reports that Discovery and Scripps might merge, and you have some great analysis on real money about Thank that. Thank you. Let's take both of them, okay? So there's two, mer there's three merger deals. One is involving uh, Crown Castle, and that's just a traditional deal uh, that is very important in order to be able to expand footprint in San Francisco and New York to be able to make telcos uh, more competitive. There's so many drop signals in these big cities. But uh, in real money, I compare the acquisition of by McCormick of, of French's Mustard, uh, uh, of Cattleman. These are very, very important brands and a Frank's Red Hot, which is regarded as a millennial brand, uh, to very akin to trying to, uh, what happened with Discovery, buying HGTV, Scripps. And the reason I say it, HGTV is popular, but it's not popular among the millennials. You need to be able to gather uh, a series of, uh, uh, of channels together in a bundle in order to have more power. Also, uh, it, the great thing about Scripps, merger with Discovery was Discovery has good international footprint, particularly Europe, so they can run it through that. On the food side of things, you've got McCormick, which really, really, really wants to expand in the spice category. Well, obviously, mustard's got spice, and we know Frank's Red Eye is definitely spicy. But you know what? In the end, I think they overpaid. I think that ConAgra may have wanted it because ConAgra has Goulden's. They have Goulden's and French's will give you a solidified area in the, in the center. But remember, the center of the store is the pantry of the store, and that's not doing that well. I also think that you have to worry about Amazon because that means that smaller players can get in. Remember, Amazon has no shelf space. It's just out there. Uh, Sir Kensington, which was bought very shrewdly by Paul Pullman, 
takes, gets rid of some of these margins that really don't have a lot of growth, the margarine, and he brings in Sir Kensington. Sir Kensington's going to prove to be a better buy than French's, I think. Although French's has been, they've done nothing with that brand over 100 years. McCormick will reinvent that brand, they will McCormickize it. McCormick long been a favorite of mine. Why? Because of the stay at home thesis. People stay at home and they cook. So I think McCormick had to do it. It was a defensive acquisition, I think. Uh, I do think they paid too much, but McCormick has historically been a good company. I'm not pushing any of the food companies right now other than PepsiCo, because they have genuine organic growth. When we look at the whole panoply of how consumer packaged good companies have done, after all of them report, people are going to circle back to PepsiCo because of innovation, execution, ingenuity. Good action alert, Sam. Thank you. Um, there was a note by Cowan out about something you've been talking about for quite some time, which is that Apple services revenue was gaining steam. Yeah, now there had been a couple of pieces in the in the interim which said that the service revenue was throwing, is slowing. Now, I think that was what they were really trying to gauge, was that last year we had a Nintendo craze, we had Pokemon Go, uh, which was a big service stream, and you don't have that this year. Uh, this note makes me feel uh, better. This note in the J.P. Morgan note about the Super Phone, the Pro, for $1,100, of which I think the carriers will all compete to have. I remain convinced that Apple is an, uh, an own stock, not a trade yeah, stock. But all you ever get from these analysts is trade, trade, trade. I'm trying to embed the thinking that along with Facebook, along with Alphabet, and yes, two that we don't own at Action Alerts, Netflix and Amazon, these are stocks you can own and don't need to trade. You can't own all of FANG. Your portfolio would then be, I mean, look, I wanted to add Autodesk, I wanted to add NVIDIA, which is on uh, the, uh, which is in our bullpen. But you can't own nothing but tech, because as we know, diversification is the only free lunch in this business. You mentioned Facebook, that was the subject of your Mad Dash segment. Yeah, Facebook is, uh, Heather Bellini is one of my absolute favorite analysts. I've really liked her. She's been completely level-headed throughout whatever storm has come. And her piece about Facebook really does make it clear that you, the concerns that were raised in the previous quarter, which were about ad load, may be mitigated by the fact that there's a lot of video. Video is the way to be able to have ads that aren't that intrusive, but certainly people are willing to watch. Now you layer on a, another piece uh, this morning, a Callum piece about how, I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure exactly which firm, I shouldn't say that, but I, there was a theory that is being put out, which is that Snap is losing business pretty rapidly to Instagram. That is something I believe to be true. I reiterate that Moffitt Nathans' price target of 11 on Snap may actually ha be cogent here in the end after the 711 million share lockup expires. We'll be watching that one. And then right now on the street.com is a fantastic piece by our own Eric Johnson on NVIDIA. Yeah, now I think that Eric is uh, right to raise questions about competition because that's what you always want to do, particularly for artificial intelligence. But he also raises the point that it is an ecosystem that NVIDIA offers. I think all of these companies are nipping, AMD nips, Intel nips. But NVIDIA is so far ahead in artificial intelligence, machine learning, autonomous driving, and GPU processors for gaming that I am not concerned. And I do think that NVIDIA, when it goes down, should be bought. We have. Uh, a price point to buy it that is some people think is unrealistic. But you know, when you have these downdrafts, NVIDIA does get hammered. All right, Jim, let's end as we always do with earnings to watch. We talked about IBM earlier, but what are you expecting from Microsoft? I, look, uh, I, I think that Microsoft is advancing. It's very funny. IBM is trying to be cloud, a different kind of more proprietary cloud. I like an open cloud. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Azure, this was Satya and Nadella decided, committed this, uh, them to a very competitive offering versus Amazon and versus Alphabet. People don't really talk about IBM. And I think that Azure is going to surprise the upside, Xbox surprised the upside. But I think that the real key here uh, for Microsoft is that they're going to have tremendous momentum from LinkedIn that no one's talked about. This could be the quarter where they break out LinkedIn and tell you things are really good. All right, Thursday is a big name for Action Alerts plus earnings. Let's start with Nucor. Okay, Nucor is not a good quarter. They pre-announced it. We're in Nucor for structural change in America. If you believe that, they, that Trump can get anything done, it is the number one play in infrastructure. Next. Snap on. Snap on, we have said on the conference call, if you go back, that we're not certain about the quarter. Why? Because uh, O'Reilly Automotive and, uh, uh, and also AAP um, and also AutoZone have correlated with it of late. It is not a name we've been emphasizing. All right, we talked about the banks earlier, Key Corp. I think the key, remember, they have the first Niagara acquisition. They did not do that well in the various stress tests. Uh, I, I think that's just because the stress tests were rooted in the idea that you're supposed to just sit there and use your capital to do nothing. 
uh, key. Beth Moon has, has got a very good geographic uh, uh, footprint that I think is doing well. It's Midwest, the acquisition of First Niagara is working very well. There's still some synergies to be taken out. Remember, when we look at the banks, I did like PNC. I did as I went over these earlier. I like PNC. I like Bank of America. I like Citi. Uh, I think that J.P. Morgan was not as strong, but it's still a buy. Goldman Sachs, not that bad. Uh, and Key is a good regional if you want to own a regional. What's next? Uh, that's it from my list. Okay, but thank I, you. But I do want to talk about your event in a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, I think that a lot of people want to spend some time with me uh, and spend some time with Lisa, my wife. Uh, and I was at Bar San Miguel last night. And we're doing an event for people who want to subscribe to Action Alerts Plus or, or members. Uh, it will be the last chance to spend some time with me until we do uh, something that's coming in October. So if you want to uh, put some input and give me some input on Action Alerts and what we should be doing and talk stocks and talk about, most importantly, the show mad money that we do that night, this is a great opportunity. And it will be the only opportunity till October. Not that I'm going into hibernation, but we just don't do these <laughs> things very often exclusive and that's july 25th at bar san miguel in brooklyn thank you jim kramer thank you so much as always all right for more information on the stocks you mentioned please head back to the street.com